So let's talk about art journaling as a spiritual practice. This has been a huge part of my creative life over the last decade. And I think it bears repeating that creativity is a huge part of our healing. It can be used for healing in so many ways and with varied and even sparse materials. I have a couple of other glue book videos that I have talked about before as being a major practice of mine and using very few materials I can create pages that I find to be very fulfilling. I have talked about how I put together images and how I use white space and the materials that I use. But in talking about creating an art journal as a spiritual practice, it comes down to a deep sense of presence and intention. For me, God is found in the act of creating, in the flow of being with materials and shutting off my mind and heart and spirit to other outside influences. So this journal that you see is an altered book, as you can tell. It is a novel, I believe. I'm not even sure exactly what it is. But I did this journal up till this point. You'll notice that it's not quite done yet as I flip through it. But I did this in two parts and it is still a work in progress. I still work in this journal. But I started from one side of the book creating in one year. And I will show you in a moment, you'll be able to see the cover. It was the year I lived into the word earthed for my word for the year. And then the following year, I flipped it over and upside down and I started from the other side and I have been working toward the center in this book. So the theme for me from each of these sides of the journal had to do with my word for the year. And so you'll find that most of the images and the themes and the words and the found poetry have a sense of fluidity and unity in them. So the first side that I'm flipping through now was my earthed year. And it was a year that I lived into my spiritual life as a way of rooting myself into the presence of God. Um, I was going through a time of transition in church and community life. I was going through transition in my my faith um, doctrine and way of believing into more of a way of knowing. And so that's what theme kind of goes through this entire side of the journal. Now, when I do flip this over, you will see that my word for the next year was stand. And for me, this word came out of the word earthed, came out of a sense of being rooted into a sense of standing in my identity, my spiritual identity, my identity um, as a faith-filled person living into the yes that God had for me. So as you look and explore and pause this and take a look at all the things I've done, I hope you can see some of that unity and that theme. These pages are very intuitive for me. Usually I start with an image and I will then take the image and go from there choosing colors that either are complementary or colors I actually found within the image itself. And I will use things like washi tape or tissue paper or watercolor crayons or sharpies and i have a specific um, short list of materials that i use for this kind of book i use a glue stick pretty much only and i do not use any paints except i think there were one or two pages that i used acrylic paints but very few of those um, I also use a, just sparse text in my books as well. Sometimes, as you see here, it's actually taken out of the altered book that I used. Other times, 
I have clipped words that I have had in a little um, dish that I go through and find what fits. Sometimes I use a quote, sometimes I use a snippet from an old dictionary, but usually I will include words, just not many of them. Um, this process for me, like I said, is very intuitive. It's actually a process of prayer. And I want to just pause here and say that prayer does not have to look any one way. I actually lead workshops and retreats for people on the process of breaking us out of our prayer boundaries that we set for ourselves and that actually the boundaries and expectations we essentially put on God by confining our prayer experience. So if we can open up ourselves to the idea of prayer as flow and as an openness to the spirit that allows for movement, allows for freedom, and allows for wholeness and abundance, I think it can be absolutely transformational to our prayer life. So as I finish up just talking about this process, I do want you to notice um, a few things about the way I use materials. I very often have a lot of space in my pages, but not always. And in terms of getting materials for yourself, I would suggest you go to used bookstores and places where you can get magazines for really cheap or sometimes even free. When we go to the dentist a couple times a year, I ask them what magazines I can just take with me. I also get photography books at used bookstores and I get old books that have interesting pages with either interesting text and fonts or interesting images. For example, a botany textbook or an old dictionary or even I have things as silly as a railroad manual from like the 1920s where you might have interesting images. So along with that, which is a very cheap way of creating and using materials, here's the cover by the way, you notice that the cover is using masking tape as well. That's one of the things I use and there's the cover on the other side with my word stand. So as I said, I use masking tape, washi tape sometimes. I use tissue paper often. I love tissue paper. But basically, any book or magazine that has images you are drawn to is open for use. Those are the materials that I use the most of. In terms of my glue stick, I use Scotch brand glue sticks. And I do find that over the years, it will start peeling in the corners, but I don't really mind that so much. They are supposed to be permanent glue sticks, but sometimes they're not. Um, you will notice that I sometimes use symbols as well, uh, circles and diamonds and spirals and other things. I also love to get at an antique store. You can get old sewing patterns that are completely transparent and really add wonderful layers to your pages. So when I use an altered book, sometimes I will take out some of the pages to just make some space, but in this book I did not take out very many because this kind of collage or glue book style does not thicken the book all that much. So I did not need to take out many pages. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this and I want to encourage you as you think about your prayer life, when you approach materials and you are going to create something, I invite you to start with silence and just an openness to God that allows for space in your mind, in your heart. You might want to use some soft music, you might want to light a candle. But space and silence are two of the most important ingredients in creativity as a spiritual practice. And I promise you, the spirit will show up because truly, we are never outside of the presence of God. It is only our awareness that 
might be lacking. So if you have any questions, I'd love you to share with me in the comments and I'll be glad to respond. But I hope that this flip through and this video will give you a sense of freedom to maybe explore your relationship with God, your prayer life in a different way. Again, any questions you have, feel free to message me or put them in the comments and I hope you have a wonderful free time of creating.